Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to the Father of our Lord Jesus. To God be other glory. Amen. 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 God bless you. <clears throat> we give God all the praise and honor. For another beautiful day. The Lord has made the second Sunday of the month of October. We give God the praise. So is going. So is the year going. So are the hours going. So are the minutes going. So are the seconds going. Mm. Gradually they are going. And the more they are going, the more we are getting older. The more time, 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 time. I kept hearing time saying, I wait for no man. I wait for no woman. I wait for nobody. Time, 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 time. Time waits for no one. Stop procrastinating. Do you want to give your life to Jesus now? Stop procrastinating. What is it that you want to do? I will, I will, I will. Do it now. You can procrastinate everything but not your salvation. You can procrastinate everything but not your salvation. For the salvation hand of God and the salvation grace of God. God is good all the time. The salvation power and salvation grace of God is extremely high and powerful. Now is the time to be salvaged. It's a beautiful Sunday morning the Lord has made. We've got to rejoice and be glad in it. I say it's a beautiful Sunday morning. The morning the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, what a beautiful Sunday morning. Come on, it's a beautiful Sunday morning. The morning the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. The morning Jehovah has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. The morning the Lord has made. We got to rejoice and be glad in it. We give him the praise. Amen. God bless you. Let the living praise the name of the Lord. No matter what you fear to pass in now, you are better than somebody somewhere. Are you hearing me? You are better than somebody somewhere. Be love of God, you are better than somebody somewhere. Stop troubling your head. Open up your head. Are you discouraged? To understand that you can't even push them, open your mouth to say, praise the Lord. Are you so discouraged to understand that you cannot even remember the past and the good the Lord has done for you? I want to let you know that he is interested in you. Highly and greatly interested in you. Because he is God, the maker of your soul. Because he is God, the lift up of your soul. The lift up of your soul. He knows everything about your soul. He knows everything about your going out and your coming in. Relax your mind and stop troubling yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Relax your mind and I say stop troubling yourself. For there is a God who is up to something, who is up to everything. Stop troubling your mind. Make up your mind to serve this great God and this God of honor. Serve him in holiness. Serve him in righteousness. Serve him in purity. Serve him in truth. Serve him. Make up your mind and say, I will serve him. That's one song we used to sing in those days when we got born again. Cha. He said, I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting. Everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting. 
everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Will you praise God from everlasting to everlasting? To everlasting to everlasting. Do you know what it means? You praise him here with all your heads. And in the world to come, in eternity, you still praise him. Are you blessing or are you praising him? From everlasting to everlasting. Who will praise this God? Who will honor this God? Who will worship this God? Amen. No matter what, he is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Don't be discouraged. Shut up and make up your mind that you worship this God. No matter what happens, that you serve this God in cleanliness and purity. And this God will make a name for himself. Unto him alone be you the glory forever in Jesus' wonderful, great, and real name. Amen. Be blessed, Jesus, forevermore. Amen. Now, we're talking about defilement. Let us pray. Dear loving Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus, the mighty man of our Lord, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, God of honor, power, might, and majesty, God of reality and dignity, the excellent Father of our Lord Jesus, have your way. Move in the power of your might and majesty and speak and minister your word to us. At the end, let your name alone be glorified and praised in Jesus' name. Speak, I will hear. Minister the word of life. Minister the word of grace to us, Lord. That we're going to eat the wall out from your table this morning. And eat from your wall this morning, oh God. And be stronger. And have enough strength to move into this week, oh God. And be brave this week, oh Lord. And exploit all the goods you have for us. Spiritually, physically, mentally, oh God. That your grace will guide us and go with us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. God bless you. You're welcome. Good morning, wherever you are. Good afternoon, good evening, depending on the location of the part of the world where you are. God keep blessing you and keep making you his own. Now and forevermore. In Jesus' wonderful name. To God be every glory. Hallelujah. Be blessed, the ancient of the days. Be praised, the man of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. You are worthy to be praised, amen. Oh, you are worthy to be praised, amen. Eshada, you are worthy to be praised, amen. Elohim, you are worthy to be praised, amen. Adonai, you are worthy to be praised, amen. Oh, you are worthy to be praised, amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We're talking about defilement. Those things that will make you that day not to be accepted before God. Those things that will make you, to, that God will remove his eyes from you and say, I don't know you, depart from me, you walk out of iniquity. These are the defilements. Those things that deform you from being who God wants you to be. Those things that will make you not to be in the real image of a father. The thing that will make you not to be who God wants you to be. These are the defilement we're talking about. These are the defilement we're talking about. God don't want you to go into these things, and God don't want you to be defied. I was trying to tell you those things that when a man do them, he will be defied. Those things that when a man do them, he will be defied. Sexual sin defies you. Sexual immorality defies you. Uh, defies somebody and things like that. When somebody sleeps with an animal, he gets into defiling himself. Remember the Bible says your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. If anybody defies this temple, God will defy the person. God will destroy the person. The defilement brings about destruction. Defilement brings about destruction. So when one is defiled, then he is waiting for destruction ahead. I don't know in any way you have defied yourself. Can you open your mouth and confess and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I want to keep this vessel clean. I want to keep this vessel pure. I want to keep this vessel holy. I want to keep this vessel righteous. I want to keep this vessel clean. I want to keep this vessel pure in every aspect, in every ramification. I am very, very sorry, my King and my God, in any way I've called the violation over this temple that I am putting on. But the Bible says your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And which temple you are? 
by the divine grace of God. God keep on blessing you. Thank you so much. As God's name be praised in your life. God be glorified as God help you to share the message all over. Thank you for the ministry you are fulfilling already. Uh, let's help one another and help the ministry of others. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. All right. So we're talking about going to fake prophets. They do this and do this. They, the fake prophet don't have your, you know, fake teachers, first prophet, fake whatever. They don't have your good at heart. They want to imprison you, cage you, and begin to milk you. And then so many of us, and so not us, but so many people are falling into prey of this false prophet. They are falling into their cage. They are falling into their prison. And that is why they are locked up from there. I remember that the Bible said that the devil does not open his gate. He doesn't open his gate for his captives. That is why whenever the devil and power of darkness gets anybody through false teacher, false evangelist, false whatever, they cage it so that they will discourage the person from going where the person will hear the truth. Because the Bible says you know the truth and the truth will set you free. Somebody could be caged for a very long time. But the moment he hears the truth, the moment he gets the truth, the moment the person hears about the truth, the person will say, no, what am I doing here? This is not my abode. This is not where I'm supposed to be. The person will rise and move on and go higher. But the power of devil, demon, and darkness, he said, no, let's hinder him, let's hinder her. Any power that be hindering you from hearing the raw world, from hearing the raw truth of the Lord, let the power be broken and he let it destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. And let the glorious hand of Jesus come your way. Power of life, power of liberty, power of power of glorious hand of God come your way. Let the mightiness of the Lord shine your way in the name of Jesus Christ. When this light shall shine upon you, when this great grace will shine upon you, when this glorious hand of Christ shall shine upon you, the name of Christ shall be glorified and praised in Jesus' name. We give God all the praise because great is the faithfulness of our God. We bless and praise him from everlasting to everlasting in Jesus' name. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. This God is so good and sweet. Serve him. You will enjoy him. You know when you are enjoying the service of God, and God is enjoying your service, come on. What a great speed on the express road. When both of you are in love with each other. Do you remember if you are married now, the first time you saw your wife or you saw your husband? That early days you were in love. Oh, you are thinking about her every minute, every moment, and things like that. That's the way God wants you. Have you ever felt in love with the Lord Jesus for the first time? Or are you just being pushed to the church? Don't defile yourself for any reason. These are some of the things that will defile a man. I think that they will stop. The last point we made is about having marks and initiation. Marks and initiations. Marks and initiations. Yes. That's why we read Leviticus chapter 20 from verse number 3. Yes, that's why we read from Leviticus chapter 20 that day. Oh, God will show us mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. We read from verse 3 to verse 6. I still want to read them again. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. All right. <clears throat> All right. Uh, we're talking about defilement. Throughout the last week, this is a new week altogether. Do you carry the defilement of the last week into this week again? No. Why not examine yourself and say, God, I don't want to start this week with any defilement. Lord, whatever I have defied myself, you know, through my thought, through my action, we're going to really come. The thing that defies a man, is it what he wears? Is it what he eats? Is it what he drinks? We're going to come to that. But I'm trying to tell you, pinpointing one by one, those things that can defile a man. In the book of Leviticus chapter 20 from verse number 3, Leviticus chapter 20 from verse number 3. That was where we stopped last time. Leviticus chapter 20 from verse number 3. Okay, that made marks. Okay, and that will set my face against that man. I will cut him off from among his people because he had given of his seed unto Molech to define my sanctuary and to profane my holy name. Remember, we are reading Leviticus chapter 20 from verse number 3. We are now reading verse 4. And if the people of the land do anywhere hide, their eyes from the man. Then he gave, okay, and they, let, let me start from verse 4 again. And if the people of the land do any way, do it in any way, hide their eyes from the man when he give it of his seed unto Molech and kill him not. Do you see the penalty? God gets to an extent and says, Kill him. Whosoever that goes into this defilation, whosoever that have consulted another power, kill him. Give, put in marks 
for protection, for preservation, for this and this is a tribal mark, this and that. The Lord is highly against it. Then I will set my face against that, that man. If the people of the land refuse to annihilate him, remove him, cut him off from the earth, then I will set my face against that man and against his family and will cut him off. And all that go a warring after him to commit wardom with Molech from among the people. You see how angry the Lord is about the whole thing. The Lord said, if you don't add, I am going to add. We are the messengers of God. This day, because Jesus has come and died, we are not going to kill anybody. But we have the power of reward. We have the sword in our hand. By the time you are preaching to somebody, by the time you are telling the person about the truth of the word of God, you are piercing the sword. Do you know that you are piercing the sword? The sword is just piercing. The word of God is harder. The word of God is hard. The word of God is powerful. The Bible calls it two-edged sword. The, you know, there was a day I was, when I was in Bible college, I was traveling back to school. I was preaching in the vehicle. By the time I started ministering the word of God, one man says, stop, 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 stop. He felt too uncomfortable. Stop. I said, stop, 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 stop. He felt too uncomfortable because the word was coming out like song. When I couldn't stop, he said, driver, stop me, 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 driver, stop me. The driver had to break down and stop. The man left the vehicle. Ah, he couldn't withhold. He couldn't withhold. Oh, that's the level I want us to go, children of God. The level that when we're preaching the word of God, the next person will be too uncomfortable. It's just not only preaching the word of God. You know, when you're preaching the word of God, you're preaching the life you're living. When you're preaching what you don't do, you're a hypocrite. When you tell people to love people that you don't love, you're a hypocrite. You are only ending up defiling yourself because you're teaching what you don't do. When you tell people to love their children and you don't love your children. When you tell people to love your wife and you don't love your wife. When you tell people to love their husband and you don't love your husband. What do you think? You're only doing the violation. You're only telling lies. There'll only be the hypocrites in the house of the Lord. When you tell people go out for evangelism, preach Jesus and you don't preach. From year to year, from month to month, from week to week, you don't preach. You felt to have overgrown. No, you cannot overgrow. Take heed. There are two things you must take heed in the scripture. Timothy wondered and wondered and wondered. That was first Timothy. He warned and wondered. What did he say? He said, take heed unto yourself. That means examine yourself. Take heed unto yourself. Make sure you don't defile yourself for anything. Make sure you don't defile yourself for any reason. After I say take heed. Examine yourself thoroughly every now and then. Keep examining yourself. So many of us examine themselves only once in a year. Sometimes once in six months. No, 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 no. Self-examination is called for every minute. It's called for every time. After examining yourself, what next are you going to do? After you must have, you know, he said, take heed unto yourself. He said also, take heed on what you preach. What you preach is representing you. Take heed on what you preach. Take heed on what you tell people. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my goodness, take heed unto yourself. You are precious before God. You are so precious, you are so costly, you are so expensive before the Almighty God. Don't just go anyhow. After the business of the day, you make you again. After telling lies, you make you again. After defiling your body with that man, with that woman, you make you again. You know, all those things are not gain, they are pain. Because they are to be shared in eternity. They are being stored somewhere. Do you know that any evil thing you do, if you don't repent about it, it is being heaped, being heaped, being heaped on the pants of the person. That is why when you repent thoroughly out of your genuine heart, and you are doing cleanliness, and you are doing purity, and you are doing righteousness, it will be adding to your glory. That day you will be giving this, and you say, oh God, when did I do all this? And the Lord said, you served me on earth. You served me under pain. You served me in tears. All the trials have brought you away. You are overcoming them. Like the Bible said, nobody is like Moses. No one was like Moses in the house of the Lord. For he came in, overcome it all. No man was as meek as he was. Moses was a simple man like you and myself. Those mark you have in your body, go for prayers and denounce them. They were giving, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were giving this and that. Most of us in deliverance ministry, you see the demon claiming somebody to be his own. After the person is born again, he said, yes, the person is born again. The soul is saved, but the body must be punished. The body must be tortured. There's a covenant. Some covenants are of the spirit, soul, and body. Okay, lad? Like I told you, a little child crying in hell. What has this child done? What has this little child done? Can't his sin be forgiven? Lord, wrap this child in hell. 
But all of a sudden, the Lord Jesus appeared and said, The day the child was born, the father and the mother dedicated him to the ministry of witchcraft. They dedicated him to the devil and demon and telling Jesus to hands off that this child is there and they have handed him over to the devil and power of the demon and power of darkness is child. How can that be? And how can that look like? Jesus is a gentleman. He cannot keep dragging and dragging. The child was crying vehemently in hell, but there should be no mercy. You know one thing about hell is that the moment one crosses, he has crosses forever and ever. I remember somebody was praying and asking the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I said, God, since I died, they brought me here. I'm not taking water. I'm not doing this. Show me mercy. Show me mercy. The angel just came and did this and like this and said, the chapter of your life has been closed. Chai, chai, chai. Beloved of God, now that you are alive, the chapter of your life is still open. Any day you die, the chapter of your life shall be closed. Any other thing you face is to be the judgment. The kind of life you live when you were here. The kind of life you live when you are still breathing. The kind of life you, are li you live when you still have time to make peace with people. And you had in your heart. The time you are supposed to say, I am very, very sorry, you had in your heart. The time you are supposed to kneel down and confess that sin, you had in your heart. This is exactly what is going to be and how it's going to be. Child of God, what are you doing to yourself? What are, why are you doing this thing to yourself? Is it not a high time you say, Lord, I'm very, very sorry. Any defilement I brought to myself. Who gave me this mark? Some people even swallowed it. Some people did it with their fingernails. Some people did it with the hairs of their private body. Some people did it with the hairs of their head. And the brothers and the brothers, all these are defiled men. Who are you sacrificing them to? You go to Mole, you go to a native doctor, they tie this and tie this for you. You still come over to Christianity and begin to worship God. No, you are defiling yourself. You are defiling yourself. You give this one yearly whatever, or monthly whatever, and you still come to God and say, God, you understand? You are a hypocrite child of God. You are a hypocritical child of God. You are living a Pharisee life that is defiled man that's not what god is expecting of you god is expecting that when you turn over to him when you cross over to him oh my god you cross over and you cross over look at those people that when they got born again the bible said the magicians they brought their magical book and whatever what of a very big amount of money even in silver in those days the bunch of these things have nothing to do with them anymore Child of God, why not as you have crossover, crossover totally. As a crossover, examine yourself and say, what part of me was dedicated to them? Was it my eyes? Was that what I, I'm having this mark? Is that what I'm having this mark? Some of the mark might be invisible now. Like in those days when we were little children, we were given mark in our heart. Not just mark like this, but the man just used razor and do it like this, do it like this. Ah! If you see the day this thing was done, the man is a wicked man. How can he use a razor, a very sharp razor, and was dealing with us? And after that, he used something blackish and rubbed on a heart. But when I got born again, I remember that. You know, when we were little children, my mother was thinking that that's the best to do for us so that we're not going to die. They will not kill us now that they her husband have died. Our father, my mother felt. I said, no, 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 this is the best way to handle them, but never knew he was initiating us to the devil, to more leg, to the power of darknesses. I don't know if you have done that already. I don't know if that was done on your behalf. I don't know if that was done for you. Even when you were a little child, you need to rise and remember it. Some people, there are some monuments that are made for them. Sometimes it's a tree that three stands as a witness standing on the ground before you that this person have defied himself and this child have been defied from the day he was born. A defiled man is there from the day he was born. This is a covenant. This is an agreement. And this three stands as a witness between these two people. Sometimes you will only end up cutting the tree. We only end up uprooting this and uprooting that. But you need to uproot the one inside of your body. You have to destroy the person before you destroy the witness. Are you hearing me? You have to destroy the fence before you destroy the witness. You only get up destroying the witness. But the real thing is still there. Witness is only needed. Witness can only be arrested when the real person have run away and escaped. You know, if you have an issue and somebody is to shoot you in a court, which is a witness, and the person shoots you, if the as far as you are there, 
They may not even have anything to do with the person. They will not call the person. But any day you run away, that's the day they will call the person. It's only the time you have destroyed the one in you that the power of darkness will go to that tree and whatever as a witness that was meant there. And by the time you destroy the one inside of you and you get up immediately and begin to destroy the witness. I said, devil, what is the witness between me and you? What is the witness between me and you? So many people are so proud. I was talking to somebody who was telling me a child of God, born again, for telling me, no, he's from a royal family. I said, excuse me, what makes you a royal family? Because your father, grandfather, great-grandfather killed a lot of people, and the head of a lot of people was made a stool for him. And the blood he is stitching on the stool, that is uh, crying on human blood. That the head of man and head of women were youth. Is that why you tell me you're from a royal family? You're from a bloody family and not from a royal family. It might hurt you, but I have to tell you the truth that will deliver you, the truth that will set you free. You're not from any royal family. You're from a bloody family. You have to, you know, cut off that linkage and come to royal hood, priesthood, and that's the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's the cleansing blood, and that's the loving blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So what am I trying to say? The precious blood of Jesus cleanses us, the Bible said, from every sin and from every unrighteousness. There are people that need this message, but only you sharing with them, they can receive this message. Please do share this message to them. What might do you have all over your body? Where, where have they taken you to? You know, a child was having a serious problem, problem, problem. I brought in the mother and said, oh, okay, that was when he was a child. Is he not a covenant? Come on, look into your life and say, any known and unknown covenant, I get you broken. Keep delivering yourself. Keep denouncing those things. Keep rejecting those things. And they'll be rejected in your body. Child of God, are you hearing what I'm saying? For the mighty hand of grace, for the mighty hand of God, for the mighty hand of love, for the excellent power of Jesus is there to set you free. The Bible said, if the Son therefore shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Have you been passed through fire? Have you been passed through Molech? All these things are the thing that will call the defilement all over your body. Ah, there was a particular lady that was answering a particular name. Anytime you finish her deliverance and you call her that name, when she answer, the demons will come back again. These are the defilement we're talking about. The devil wants to defile you by bringing evil dream. You keep seeing yourself eating in the dream. You keep seeing yourself fornicating in the dream. There's a covenant that has not been taught. There's a covenant that has not been broken. You see a man coming to you. You see a woman coming to you. You see yourself keep having a baby in the dream. All these things are the signs of, 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 of possessionship, ownership, agreementship, and whatever. Until you pray and stand upon the word of God. There's something in your life you have not touched. You need to touch that particular thing. Can you say, God, remind me? God, remind me this. God, remind me this. You don't know when you get into this covenant. There was one particular lady. She had stayed for years. Fine, young, beautiful. But in her 30s, late 30s, getting to 40s, she was not married. She was so troubled. She couldn't believe herself. She said, what is happening to me? She was so troubled in her heart. What am I going to do? She's saying that any man that come will run away. Any man that come will run away. We're talking about the file man. And then one day she came, we're praying, praying, praying. And the Lord said, is she worried about her life? And she's never worried about the covenant she broke. I said, Lord, can you tell me the covenant? The Lord said, this particular young lady, that when she was so tender, she came to the altar. He said, nobody, him and the Lord alone. She said, God, I will keep my virginity. I'll keep myself to you. I'm not going to defile myself. I will keep myself until the day I got married. My husband will be the first man to have sexual intercourse with me in my life. That was her prayer. That was her declaration. That was her vow. That was her covenant with the Lord. He said, Lord, on your altar, I made this covenant. On your altar, I made this declaration. Oh, my goodness. And she never knew the Lord was sharing. She never knew that God is a recorder. This thing was recorded that day. This thing was kept in order that day. And she left. And then after some time, you know, when she was telling me, I said, you made this covenant. And she started crying. She started crying and crying and crying and crying. I said, did you keep it? He said, no, that she has taken in. She has even gotten a baby outside wedlock. And then, today she's still living in immorality. I said, that's a covenant broken. And then when you broke this covenant, instead of you to amend your ways and come back to God and say, I'm sorry, you continue living in sin and living in sin and living in sin. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. That's not the will of God. That's not the agreement of God. That's not what God has for us. 
child of God, in whatever way you have defiled yourself, you can come back again and say, God, I am sorry for this defilement. I am sorry. I'm trying to tell you those things that will defile a man. Another thing is profane. Profane, taking holy things with disrespect. You know, taking holy things with disrespect. This, there are holy things that needed to be handled in a very holy way. But because we are too used to God, that is another thing that is consistent, profane. Profane, profane, you know, handling holy things with this then, you know, uh, as sacrilege, you know, this is a holy thing, but you handle it anyhow you like. No, 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 no. Oh, look at what the Bible said in the book of Leviticus chapter 21, verse 4. 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 But he shall not defile himself, being a sheep man among his people, to profane himself. No, he shouldn't defile himself. They shall not make badness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard, nor make any cutting in their body, in their flesh. Have you seen it? And they shall be holy unto their God, and not profane the name of their God for the offering of the Lord made by fire. And the bread of their God, they do offer, thereof they shall be holy. It did you what the Bible said? Not making profane in the name of the Lord. Not making curtains in your body and things like that. Young man, you that put on dread hair, you are defiling yourself. The Bible said, don't make all this cotton, all this, all this, or that. Forget about them. Come back to holiness and righteousness. Dress like a woman, dress like a man. Are you hearing me? That God has gotten a standard for you. The Bible said, this is not shouldn't be the tradition of your family member. Somebody will die now. Everybody in the family will so black, black, black. And you born again, child of God. You join them in wearing black. You join them in wearing that black. And yes, this is the black. We are mourning. We are mourning. You are mourning in the heart. Look at when Moses died, when Aaron died, the Bible said the people mourn. It's not sin to mourn. You got to mourn. Oh, I'm missing this person. Oh, he's departed. Oh, you mourn. But the Bible said we shouldn't mourn like people that doesn't have hope. We should mourn like people that have hope in Christ. Now, one day, anybody again, child of God, that ran out that died, will make heaven. One day, we're going to meet again. But you mourn and mourn for the person when you didn't preach the truth to the person. When you didn't tell the person the truth of the word of God. When you didn't tell the person that it's only true purity, holiness, and righteousness that the person should be saved. When you didn't tell the person about the loving kindness of Jesus Christ. When you didn't tell the person about the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary for the person to be saved, to be renewed, to be visited by God. What are we trying to say, children of God? Don't defile yourself by profane. Handling the holy thing with disdain. Handling the holy thing the way you like it. A lot of people have defied the altar of the living God. And that is why I pity a lot of pastors. I said, but why are this thing happening? You will see a lady that is naked already. What she's wearing is too short. By the time she climbed the altar high to say her inner one will be exposed. And her lap will be exposed. And you see her, the hand of her bra. And then you see every exposing part of her. She's wearing sleeveless. When she lifts her hand, the armpit is there. And she's, you know, because this then and then standing on a holy place when this abomination are standing in a holy place you didn't know what we're talking about stop defiling yourself don't, don't commit the sin of profane handling the holy thing with this then handling the holy thing with this then you know everywhere you get to you see little children when they're doing holy communion people will come i was very surprised in the church i went one day everybody I thought that some selected people who has confessed the sin, who have lived in purity, who have lived in cleanliness, who have made peace with their maker, will take the Holy Communion. I was very, very sorry. Everybody in the church, even the young men that came to church with baggaging, even the men that came to with shots in the church, ah, even the little children in primary school, even the little children in nursery school, everybody was giving Holy Communion. I said, then why is it Holy Communion? It is for the people that have made peace with their God. It is people that have given their life to Jesus Christ. And no wonder so many people are subjected to sicknesses. So many men of God don't know the bondage they are putting a lot of people into. Child of God, listen to me right now. Any day they're committed to doing Holy Communion in your church, and you know you're not in peace with God. And you know you have offended Jehovah. And you know there's a sin you've committed. And you know there's somebody you're quarreling with you have not made peace with. 
Please, it's not a hypocritical. Don't be a hypocrite. Tell them you're not going to take that Holy Communion. Relax your mind and never take it. Go and make peace. Look at even the common offering, the Bible said. Even when you go to offer the offering, and remembering that you have an ought with a brother, the Bible, the word of God said, go and make peace with a brother. Drop your offering, go and make peace. Drop your offering, go and make peace before you come to eat again or drop the offering again. Do you know it is as serious as that? Here, the Bible, the word of God said, well, we read in Leviticus chapter 21. The Bible, the word of God said, but he shall not defile himself, being a sheep man among his people, to profane himself to defile himself, to make himself unserious before God. They shall not make badness upon the head, neither shall they shave off the corner of the head, nor make any cutting in their flesh. Don't make any cutting of such thing. You know, you see to that. You know, don't round it up. You see to that. That's the Bible, the word of God. When you want to shave, 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 be clean and things like that. If you want to leave your beard, leave it. There's one particular cult, they will round it up like this, round it up like this. That's how they will carve it, carve it, carve it. That is the symbol of that cultism. And so many born again children of God and so many children don't know that style. There's a young man that came to my office, he doesn't sleep. Anytime he goes, if night is coming, he will be so troubled. When they break, he will be happy because he doesn't sleep in the night. If he's trying to sleep, some problem will come. Anytime he wants to sleep, some people will come to fight him. They keep on fighting. He said every time in the dream, he'll be fighting and fighting and fight out physically. I will not sleep again. By the time he came to my office, I looked at him. I saw the massage he was keeping. The way the, the other time that will remove every single hair on the head. Every single hair on the head will be removed. And their beards will be up to like this. And they begin to go down. I said, you didn't belong to this court. And when they come and do some sign language to you, you will not understand. They say, this one is not a member. And they keep on afflicting you and they keep on affecting you. That is not the standard of a child of God. That is not the dressing of a child of God. You are taking that which does not belong to you. Child of God, come out from all these things. Come and serve God in cleanliness. He's a gentle God. He's a mighty God. He's a loving Father. He's a forgiving God at the same time. Come and serve this God of holiness. Come and serve this God of righteousness. Come and serve this God of purity. Come and serve this God of cleanliness. Serve him with all your mind. Serve him with everything. Say, God, what is the defiling? Man, part of me, any part of me that have been defied. You have a new baby, and then you send the message to him, ah, your mother in law, your father in law, uh huh, your mother or your father, they went immediately to a native doctor and they go with the name of your child. And before understanding, they begin to do one sacrifice or the other. We're welcoming, we're welcoming, we're welcoming, we're welcoming this child into the family. This is the way we have been doing it. And they will name your child among the goddess of the land. That is why the moment you have your baby, the first thing to do is to pray and cover your baby in the blood of Jesus and say, any initiation by any man, any woman, will it not work? Do you know how many children you have? Do you know how far initiation has gone on their head? Even if your mother can do that, your mother, your, your father cannot do that. What of your grandmother? What of your grandfather? My mother told me that in those early days, when we were little children, those days when we were born, there's a goddess in my area. Anybody born, if you, as I am a boy, as I'm a, a, a baby boy is born, they will take a he file. And go to that place and says, call the name of the goddess and say, a boy has been born to you, and that is why I bring you this fire. Take it. And then if it's a woman, a hen will be given. You no, know, the destiny of the person has been tied to that place. And since then, anything that happened, that goddess will send and have been handed over this person. And by the time we grew up, we remembered it. We gathered the mass and we went to that goddess. And we tell the goddess, we hate you, we reject you, we defile you in the name of Jesus. But before we did that, it was a problem in my land. It was the heavenly world because some people are worshipping it. And when you are not worshipping the thing, they are worshipping it on your behalf. And they are trending with your destiny. You see to that. By the time we finish it, I mean, we destroy it. All those people that could not do anything physically. All the people that could not succeed in life, you begin to sit in working in their life. Because their destiny was tied by something that power and influence is monitoring them. 
I don't know what defilement you have caused in your life and the particular fault and the influence is monitoring you. That is the name above every other name. That's the name of Jesus. That's the name above every other name. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. That is the way out. And the way out is through Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He said, I'm the way, the life, and the truth. Jesus is the life. Do you want to live that clean life, pure life? Come to Jesus right now. Are you looking for the way? Come to Jesus. Are you looking for the truth? You have arrived if you come to Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I'm the way, the life, and the truth. Nobody coming to the Father except through me. Child of God, this is a high time we call upon the name of the Lord. And the name, Lord, do it again because you've been doing it. Do it again for me, the ancient of the days. Do it again for me, man of war. Do it again for me, Jehovah Shalom. And the Lord will rise in power, might, and majesty. And the Lord will do it again by the power of his might. And only his name alone shall be praised forevermore. Hallelujah. We give him all the praise. We give him all the honor. The Lord Jesus Christ is there for you. So begin to lay hand on your children and say, any initiation that is meant for you, whether I give the order or whether I didn't give the order, whether it is done in secret or whether it's done in open, I reject it. They will go out for reincarnation and say, ah, this is a reincarnated, this is a, this are the defilement we're talking about. A child that came out in life, a child that came out in peace. Let me warn you and warn you again. Those of you that the moment you have your baby, you begin to present your baby. Oh, from my mama, uh, 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 from labor room, you have taken the picture of your baby. And the first thing you could do, instead of thanking God of heaven, in the name of a pretext and whatever you have in your mind, to show the whole world, they say, I cannot do it. Now it is done. You bring a new innocent baby to the world through Facebook. You don't know there are a lot of witches. You don't know there are a lot of destiny hunters there. Hey, a child have not done anything. You present the child as raw as the child is, as innocent as the child is, to the whole world. And the whole demon and power of darkness will begin to look for the destiny of the child. You don't know that any child that comes on the earth has a destiny. Look at what the wise men told Herod. They said, we saw his star afar off. You don't know there are people that are still monitoring stars of people afar off. They saw a star of Jesus. They said, this one is different. This one is higher. This one is brighter. This one is glorious. No such a star has ever appeared on earth before. Let's go for this star, let's look for this star. This star needed to bow down for the owner of this star. Oh, in what part of the world is he? It is still happening. It is still happening. Child of God, it is still happening. Every child coming here on earth is coming with a destiny. And then all you could do is to present the child as raw as the child is now. And then, and not because you're too prayerful, not because you can stand aggressively and defend your child. But why expose this as a child? Many of you will start a project and immediately you bring it. Uh, then God, God is helping me. I start building my house. Did you complete that house? You cannot complete it because you have thrown yourself to the uh, uh, covens of, uh, you know, uh, uh, powers of darkness and devil. You are the one that look for their trouble. They have to come. Don't show people. You are, don't show people your foundation. Show them your results. Are you hearing me? Don't show them the starting point. Show them the ending point. Don't show them the beginning point. Show them the finishing point. Let them know that God is there. Let them be surprised the way it is done. Stop defiling yourself. Like this place, my office, where I am preaching from right now. When this land was given to me, I was excited. I was glad. I was introducing people. I brought up to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 people. Many people. I found out that my friend. I brought them here. And by the time I wanted to start, the Lord said, you have defied the land. I said, what did I do? He said, you brought in your friend. I brought in your enemy. And they bewitched you. That's not how you can do it again. Hey! All doors closed. I never knew. I would have thought that the devil, I would have been binding the devil and that not knowing I am the cause. I have to go in and repent and say, God, I am very, very sorry. Forgive me, O Lord, show me mercy. By the time the Lord finished forgiving me, I then prayed for two good years, two good years. I was asking him for forgiveness. Nothing was done in that, 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 that place again. The project was like an abandoned project. Are you like an abandoned project? Is that anything you started doing, you wanted to finish, but is abandoned today? Have you checked check the cost? Have you checked what you did? Have you checked what you said? Have you checked the way it happened? Oh my God. By the time two years elapsed, I get back to God and say, God, I'm sorry, I want to start. He said, do it my way and not your own way. Even my close friends, they never knew I was raising a place. And before I understand it, by the time I finished, was the time they came. By the time I finished, was the time they came. And they begin to look and say, wow, mighty God, wonderful God. 
Great God. I started laughing. I said, God, thank you so much. Don't project that child to the world. The child that is so innocent. The child that cannot speak. You know one thing about little children? They can have pain and the pain can make you to be restless throughout the night because you don't know what part of their body they're having the pain. But a spirit's mother will begin to touch the babies, touch the babies, touch the babies, and things like that. You remember in those days we were little children? You may be carrying the child and the child may fall off from your hand. You will not tell your mother now. You will not tell anybody. The mother and the child will be crying throughout the night. You are sleeping already busy. And the mother and the child will be battling. The best person to handle that child is the mother that delivered that child. Are you a mother here? May God give you grace to handle your children, especially the tender ones and all your children, no matter their age in Jesus' name. Don't cause profane. Don't handle unholy things like that. Look at the mouth people are using to take Holy Communion. Look at the kind of people that are taking Holy Communion. The Bible says, Holy Communion, you eating the flesh and blood of Christ. You know, the thing is dedicated and then... It's pronounced the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ. Look at the kind of mouth you're using to eat it. Look at the kind of heart you're using to take it. Look at the tongue of tongue that it is put to. The tongue that have told lies. The tongue that have done evil. The tongue that have said a lot of abominable things. The tongue that is ready to slander. The tongue that is ready to go far in destruction of life. That's the same tongue that that thing is dropped. Oh my God. No, 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 no. That's not the way out. That is profane, child of God. That is taking the holy things unholy. That is taking, making the holy things unholy. Making the righteous things righteous. There was a day we went to one particular church and we're having a meeting in that church. As we sit down to have a meeting in that church, uh, there was an issue that happened and they invited me and some other men of God and some people of the land. And the people of the land. And by the time they came, by the time they came, the church presented a cola, and they were looking for a center table, and they couldn't see a center table. And before you understand it, what they brought was the offering box. I told the man of God, no. You cannot use the offering box as a center table. No, you cannot use it as a side stool to serve up believers and unbelievers. No, this is a holy thing. The man of God didn't understand it from my point. I was there, my mind was saying, these are the chief, these are... People that have not given their life to Jesus and they came inside the house of the Lord and we have to go and bring a dedicated offering balls in the house of the Lord and keep for them and keep a cola on top of it for them and serving them from holy things. Do you remember what happened to Bethesda? He used holy things. He drank uh, with his girlfriend, the Bible said, with his girlfriend, with the concubine, with this thing. He drank from a holy thing. This was the cup and the properties. The father conquered Jerusalem and took all this thing from the house of the Lord. The father was still having the fear of God. The father never made use of all this thing. The father kept them. But this man felt his wife. This is a fine cup that were one time using in Jerusalem in the service of God, in the dedication of a holy thing. And they now brought forth the cup and begin to drink alcohol with it. A cup that never saw alcohol for the first time. A cup that was dedicated to the glory of God. And it was packed for too many years until the father died. And then he came out and brought them. By the time they were trying to drink with it, a handwriting appeared on the wall. Take a letter again, many seconds. You know, Sudan, yeah, there are days that George and things like that. Take a take a minute of a sin. You see, to that, you have you, you have finished. And your cup is filled up and your end has come. Child of God, I don't know the kind of defilement you're causing yourself. I don't know the kind of defilement you have gone into. Now is a acceptable time. Tomorrow might be too late. Are you playing with the holy thing in your life? Are you playing with your salvation? When you're playing with your salvation, you're playing with the holy thing. Today you're born again. Tomorrow you're in sin. You're falling into sin. You're falling into unrighteousness. You're falling into iniquity. No, 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 no. Remember the Bible, the word of God said, whosoever that defiles himself, the God is going to destroy that person. How are you living your life? We're going to round up this message. I'm rushing off another program this time around. I have to preach somewhere right now. Again, keep on praying for us. You see the way we're running around. After this preaching, I still have another appointment for today again. You see to that. Somebody may call me now. Hey, Daddy, I want to talk to you. I want us to say, not knowing I have piled up myself with activities for day, for today. Child of God, what are we trying to say? This is God in action. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. God is interested in every human being he has created. He wants you to be holy. He wants you to be pure. Stop defiling yourself with those negative words. Stop defiling yourself with all the negative thoughts. Stop defiling yourself by cursing those children you have born. God gave them 
Eh, uh -huh. to you, but you open your mouth and tell them thunder will fire you. Eh, uh, you are very, very stupid. Why should you go die? Why not praise that child? Why not speak up to that child? Why not speak comfort in that child? Can you bring all your children together and tell them you are the best in life? Can you begin to shake their hand? Can you lay hand on them? Any calls you have spoken, any word your husband has spoken out of anger. Tell your, your husband, darling, this child is bad, this child is this, this child is this. Even if that child is a dummy, even if that child is unspeakable, even even if that child cannot talk that child, why God gave you that baby? You are the only person that can handle that baby. You're the only person that can handle that child. Come on, bring peace back to your house again. Let there be that mighty peace. Let there be that mighty joy again. That the joy of the Lord will remain the strength of your life. That you bring the children again. You bless them so that their future will move on. I know a particular woman in those days when you call the child, they say, thunder will fire you. You will be useless in life. You are going to serve your, 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 your younger one. And the woman used calls and calls and calls. Do you know the boy, the young man he called, is far above my age. He's even older than my immediate elder brother. But do you know, because the causes the mother left on him, because of all this defilement on him, before understanding, he become my age my, a classmate in education. He's far older than, he's far older than my immediate elder brother. But a lot of things were heaped to him. He was taken from one place to serve one man and serve another person and serve and serve. He was moving from one city to another city, from another city to another city, and from another city to another city. That was how he was moving on. And that was how he was moving around. Oh my God. Because of defilement. I don't know what defilement have caused in your life. Who defied you? Did your own defilement start from that of your mother? Did it start from your father? Where did your defilement start from? This is time, child of God. This is time, child of God, for total repentance. This is time, child of God, for the glory of God to come back to you again. Oh, it's time for us to arise and say, God, I need you. Shall we begin to pray in the name of Jesus Christ? Can you begin to say, who have defied me? And whom have I defied here on earth? Father, any defiled men, my sherry, ba 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 who has defied me? A lot of people have been taken to some places. I'm going to take you somewhere. Come, come, come. I'll take you somewhere. They went there where they were defied by the so-called false prophet. No, 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 no. If you're a child of God, he used Bible. If you're not born again, he used the, 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 uh, the, 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 the wooden stick of this and this and do your own. Should it be done that way, child of God? Who have defied you? God is preparing you for a great use. But there are a lot of defiled men that were done in your life in those days. The blood of Jesus has cleansed you, but the scares are there, the marks are there. Come on, quit the devil is stressing back. Can you begin to say, what are you stressing back? What can the devil trust back to me? What, in the name of Jesus, I remember them. Do I still, the blood of Jesus has cleansed me from that sin, but do I still have a witness of darkness that is standing witnessing that this thing was done for me in so, so, so year and in so, so, so time? A man was suffering and suffering, losing job, this and this, until he went home. The father said, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you were born, a little child, so, 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 it was done for you, and we kept it for you, and we kept patronizing it every month. Every child will want, every mother and father will want their children to succeed. And the boy made code of that and ran away with it and broke it. The day he broke it and prayers were made and it was cancelled, open doors started. Favor started. Opportunities started coming. Companies were hiring him. Companies were running after him because no more, nothing is covering him. I don't know what is covering you. Can you begin to say every defilement in my life? Every way I have handled the holy thing in a holy way. Everything I have gotten any mark, any initiation of any type in my body, in my system. I reject, I resist, I devour, I devastate. In the mighty name of Jesus and God of heaven and earth will show you favor. And God of heaven and earth will show you mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you praise and worship you. If you're here, you're not born again, we're not talking about you. All we're talking about will be like a pouring out water. But if you want to be part of what you're doing, you must be born again. You must give your life to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You must be born again. Can you say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry I am a sinner. Come into my life right now, Lord. I say I open my heart for you. Come in as my Lord and my Savior. From the depth of my heart. I accept you as my all in all, now and forevermore. Now that you are giving your love to Jesus, I pray that God will keep you, protect and preserve you. And the merciful hand of God will protect and preserve you in the name of Jesus. May you be a seed of God and be who God wants you to be. As I cover in the precious blood of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name I pray. 
Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. All of us that have defied in one way or another way, may God cleanse us. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse us. Every mark of initiation you have, I defy those marks right now. If you're having any mark on your body, you don't know how it happened or you know how it happened, can you touch those marks right now? I begin to put them, I begin to do as if you are removing something from that mark. Anything, any initiation, any covenant, spoken on any day, spoken in the morning, I remove them out of you. In the evening, I remove them out of you. In the afternoon, any mark that was made in the river, I remove it under the sun, I remove it through, uh, through the moon power, I remove it through the water spirit, through the power of witches and wizards, I remove them out of you. I break the power of those marks right now. That those marks have no mark over you, I have no right over you again in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Any mark of bondage that have been keeping you in bondage, even the one that are invisible that cannot be known, I get them broken now in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that be causing you set by, causing unnecessary delay in your life, you have waited and waited and waited. You're not receiving any result. I decree right now, let those man, let those initiation, let those covenant, everything done with Molech in your life, be gone and be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Let there be a new beginning. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let the old be gone with the old. Let those might be broken. Let those covenants be broken. Is it your mother? Is it your grandmother? Is it your great great grandmother, father, grandfather, great grandfather that have gone somewhere and are kept keeping something for you? Wherever they're keeping that thing, let that thing catch fire. Let it catch fire. Anything that was done against or for you that is hidden in secret, that they sacrificing one thing or the other there, let it be broken and be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Today, let the Lordship of Jesus, totality of great God, great God and His grace, come upon your life and Jesus become your all in all. From now onwards, the joy of the Lord remains your strength. I cover in the precious blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. May the Lord keep you. I got to see you again tomorrow evening again. Oh, my, my, my. We will be talking about fruits of the Holy Spirit. Fruits of the Spirit. I got to see you tomorrow evening again. God will keep you. God will bless you. Thank you for sharing this message. I got to rush out right now for another program somewhere. God, I've been our strength. I love you all. I feel like staying more with you people because I love you all. Those of you chatting me from many parts, listening from many parts of the world. God bless you. Those of you that have been calling us, encouraging us, praying for us, God bless you. Those of you that have been keeping us online and say that data cost is too much today and you're keeping us online, thank you so much. God will bless you. Those of you that have been, God have been using to cleanse the tears of widows and orphans, Father, let God bless you and bless you and bless you. Those of you that God have been using immensely in one way or the other way, may the joy of the Lord remain your strength. God bless you. I love you all. I feel like saying more, but it's expedient that I have to go now. Let me leave. God bless you. Until we meet again tomorrow evening, it is well with you. Remember, it is by 7 p.m. Nigerian time. It is well with you. God bless you. Amen and amen.